From the very first second I landed in Newfoundland, I've done everything I can do to show you what life here is really like. From getting screeched in, partying with locals, eating classic foods, and exploring small towns, I'd love to say that I've showed it all, but the truth is that you haven't seen anything yet. I know you guys got a little bit of a taste of what the province is like. Well now let me show you what a taste of someone living in this province is like. And the right man for that job, well he's one of Newfoundland's last local cod fishermen, Captain Dave. You see, cod fishing is ingrained in Newfoundland's culture. It's the reason why Europeans sailed across the Atlantic to come here and for a long time, it was Newfoundland's most profitable economic activity. But after over 500 years of large-scale cod fishing, cod stocks dropped so low that in 1992, the Canadian government had to ban all cod fishing activities along Canada's east coast, which put an end to tens of thousands of local jobs and effectively ended one of the biggest family traditions in Newfoundland. Over the years, locals have had no choice but to try and find other jobs to survive, which is why there are now such little amounts of local fishermen left in the province. All right, so the plan here is to spend a little bit of time with Captain Dave, and we originally wanted to go cod fishing with him, but wind gusts here are over 50 kilometers an hour, so we're doing the second best thing. We're cleaning, gutting the fish, and we're learning about the history of icebergs and cod here in Newfoundland. He showed us how to clean and rack the fish so that it could dry and then eventually be made ready for salting and smoking. It'll be gentle. This will be his dinner this year. This year, yeah. Point. He also showed us the bait for catching the cod, squid. If you caught that and you just keep it here, that's our bait. No, no, I didn't catch these. They came ashore last night. No, they just no. They just ran right. So there's some squid just sitting in the water right there. They just wash up ashore, and he uses those squid to catch cod. Look, like, let me show you. Look at all this squid that he's got lying around. Boom, oh, fresh squid. Fresh squid right here. This would go for so much money back home, and it's just bait for cod. As a born and raised city boy, this was something I truly could not believe we had in Canada. I was always thinking of doing this in like Japan or Korea or somewhere that in the big fishing community, but we have it in our own country. We have everything we need here. What makes Dave so special is that he's one of the last local cod fishermen still moving through Newfoundland, meaning that he doesn't fish to sell, but rather he fishes to eat and for his own pleasure. So this, this isn't for sale, this is just for you. <clears throat> everything is for sale, price is right. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. Except my wife. <laughs> <laughs> now there's usually much more of an operation between catching and storing codfish, but since we didn't have any recently caught cod to deconstruct, they've brought us out to the calmer part of the waters to try and find some. First things first, time to cut up the bait. We drop it in, we've got the line, and we're gonna try and pull up a fish. Right. A cod? Well, we're gonna try. Now this is not a very good spot for catching cod, where we're to right now, because right. we cannot go out today on the fishing ground because it's just too windy. Yeah. Right? We dropped our lines down, but after finding no initial luck, Mike thought of a great idea. Now Dave, I know you Newfoundlanders kiss a lot of cod. Would it help to catch one if I puckered up here? Would that entice it? <laughs> I think in that case you better bring your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so the winds are so strong today we can't go out where the fish actually are. We thought we could get some in this quiet cove. We didn't catch anything. We're reeling them up. Hey, but at least we came out. That's what counts. We came out, we got the experience, we learned a little bit. And it's not about catching the fish, it's about meeting exactly. cool people and having cool experiences. Sometimes you just gotta have a positive attitude and uh, just take what you can get and then see what happens. It's a mindset, baby. But cod isn't just important to Newfoundlanders for fishing, well, it's also great for kissing and painting. All the buildings, all the fishing stores, all the fishing stages years ago yeah. were red. They were painted with cod liver oil. So oh. it was all red because it was painted with yeah. this? That red coloring actually comes from red ochre, which is red colored powder. That's what you use to paint? That's what you mix with the cod liver oil ah. to color the cod liver oil. By mixing the two together, you can make paint. And that is what originally was used to color Newfoundland homes. As much fun as we had during this whole experience, what was probably the coolest moment 
was hearing about Captain Dave's humble beginnings. You know, it was uh, quite a different life growing up. There was no road to the village when I was a boy. There was no electricity. I think we got electricity when I was about 19 years old. So the only way in and out was by boat. There was no such thing as a phone or anything like that. Boys and girls only came in the house long enough just to eat yeah. and gone through the door again. Captain Dave grew up in a town of just 40 people. And to this day, his super small town beginnings play into his deep love for fishing. If you've heard anything about Newfoundland or if you've watched the other videos from my series, you know just how cheerful the people here really are. And that's why throughout his entire time of fishing, Dave took to writing poems about his friends and the places that he saw. And before we left, he wanted to tell us one of his favorites. When life troubles him you in and worry gets you down, when your smiles slide away and your face wears a frown, when your patience wears so thin, even those that you love dear, feel the stinging heralds of your anger and despair. When you have nowhere to turn, and it's dark right to the end, just call me up, I'll walk with you, and always be your friend. That's lovely. In the past, I've only thought that fishing could be some activity that I would do in Japan or Korea or somewhere far away from Canada. But look at what you've just seen. Everything that you need in life can be found close to you if you just have an open mind and you go out and you look for it. And so if you guys are ever in Newfoundland and you're looking for a really cool activity to do, make the drive over to Tooling Gate. Come here to Captain Dave's prime berth fishing. Give him the love and respect that he deserves. Our next stop is at Auk Island Winery, one of just two wineries in the entire province of Newfoundland, and it just so happened to also be in Twillingate. And they actually don't call it wine, they call it moose juice. In fact, none of their wines are actually made with grapes. Instead, each one showcases local Newfoundland ingredients. The five that I chose had wacky names, like moose juice, 50 shades of bay, half-cut dandelion, baked apple iceberg, and raspberry screech. They included, again, zero grapes, but instead, fusions like blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, dandelions, baked apples, <gasps> and partridge berries. I'll start with moose juice, please. <laughs> Absolutely. Long, 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 long. All right, wine number three, half cut, made from dandelions. This is the baked apple, wine number four. That's beautiful. It's a heck of a wine. <laughs> like with cod fishing, the best part of this experience was making three new local friends. Hello! Yes! <laughs> oh, one more awesome subscriber. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you as well. Take care. In what has become somewhat of a pattern in our Newfoundland travels, Mike and I made it a must to go visit the lighthouse at the top of Twilling Gate. It's hard to really be able to describe to you what's going on right now because there's a lot of wind, but just know, Twilling Gate, small, historic fishing town, and that means that it more than likely has a lighthouse. And so we can't actually go in the lighthouse because the museum is closed, but we can definitely enjoy the hiking trails and the views around it. <laughs> and of course, we're welcomed by the beautiful lighthouse, Newfoundland wind and the lighthouse, and Mike. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what, a little secret between you and me, what is right behind me, is the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in my life. Newfoundland people are lucky. Who else can just park their car and go stare at one of the most beautiful views of all time and then go back to work or go back home and eat and sit on the couch? I mean, places like this, in locations like this, deserve to be visited. All right, so we're back here at Captain Dave's prime birth fishing location. He showed us an immense amount of kindness and respect. He gave Mike and I a tour, brought us on his boat. Did so many things that he didn't have to do and he didn't even charge us for it. So when someone shows you kindness and respect, you show it back. That's the principle here at Sprout. It's a principle I, I value in my own life. So a bottle of wine and a, and a private note just for Dave. That's how you gotta do it.
So apparently when in Twillingate, if you ask any local where to eat, the answer is always Annie's. Mike and I said, the locals do it, why shouldn't we? So one food item that Newfoundland is actually really well known for is moose. So today, Mike and I are having a moose burger. First time I've ever had it. Apparently it is the king of meat. And of course, you gotta end off an amazing day. You're in Twillingate with a healthy salad, a healthy burger, and a beautiful view of the harbor. It's impossible to explain how unique of an experience visiting Newfoundland has been. And being able to get to know some of its locals made the trip that much more special. It's crazy how much your perception of a place can change when you interact with other humans. So whenever you travel next, make sure to get off your phone and start speaking to people because you never know where a conversation can lead you. Coming up on Sprout, the final Newfoundland episode. The one where we complete the drive of the entire province and explore some of the most unbelievable remote locations in the country. It's going to be one heck of an experience, so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and stay up to date with this cross-Canadian event. I look forward to seeing you back here next week for episode five.